The Book of Enoch had to be removed because it exposed the fallen angels and gave us way too much information about real biblical events that the higher-ups wanted to steal and gatekeep for themselves in order to keep Christians ignorant to the deep revelations of the supernatural realm. If the evidence has been discovered with the tablet, if the government established bases up there, and if Hollywood is using it as a form of symbolism to mock the masses, and especially if Jude and Peter both quote from the Book of Enoch almost verbatim, it is not illogical to say that this book is very relevant to Scripture. Sure. The Book of Enoch has been a very mysterious topic within the Christian community for a long time. Now you may have mixed feelings about it, you may think that it's real, you may think that it's fake, or you just don't really know. But I promise by the end of today's video, you are going to get a lot of clarity on what this book actually is. What's going on guys, it's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, let's get into it. So who is Enoch? Enoch is a biblical character that's mentioned briefly in Genesis 5.18, where he's described as a man who walked with God, who pleased God so much that God ended up taking him to heaven without a physical death. However, not much is mentioned about him except for a book outside of the canon Bible. And some people believe because the book of Enoch is not in the canonized Bible, it's not scripture at all. However, some people on the other side deem it as extra biblical literature and would even go as far to call it scripture. So, what is it then? I would go as far to say that it is actually scripture. And the reason the enemy discourages Christians from reading it is because it exposes more about the spiritual realm than you think. So why do I think it's biblical? Well, the evidence is insurmountable that the early church viewed the book of Enoch as scripture. Now, let me preface this by saying the Bible that we have today is all you need in your walk with Christ. You're not missing out by not reading extra biblical books or non-canonized books. At the end of the day, you should know your Bible very well if you even want to delve into these other books. If you don't know the Bible, Bible, and if you don't know your identity in Christ, all of this knowledge will be worthless. But if you do know the Bible and you do know who you are as a son or daughter of God, these non-canonized scriptures are very useful for your walk as a Christian. And I'm not denying any of the authenticity of the scripture that we have. Everything in the Bible is accurate to its core. However, there were books that were removed by a Catholic council in 325 AD known as the Council of Nicaea. And the reason that we know they were removed is because of the archaeological discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls which contain non-canonized literature that's even referenced in the Bible that we have today. We also know that the early church viewed the book of Enoch as scripture because both Jude and Peter quote it almost verbatim in the New Testament. And we will break down those scriptures in detail. Now you're probably wondering, where's the proof that the book of Enoch is legitimate? Although the book of Enoch was removed from the Bible by the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, like I mentioned earlier, fragments of this book were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls which predate our canonized Bible today. These fragments were identified in two groups, one being known as the 4Q201 and the other one being known as the 4Q204. Keep in mind, the Dead Sea Scrolls were dated back to the Hasmonean period, which were decades before Jesus Christ was even born, and also decades before Peter and Jude were also born. Now, like I mentioned earlier, events from the book of Enoch are also quoted in the Bible by Jude in Jude 1, 14 to 15 and quoted again by Peter in 2 Peter 2, 4. Let's compare them side by side and you'll be able to see that the early church did view the book of Enoch as scripture, which is why they taught it in the Bible that we have today. Jude 1 14 to 15 in the Amplified Classic Version says, It was about these people that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, Look, the Lord came with myriads of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly deeds they have done in an ungodly way and of all the harsh and cruel things ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So we see here that Jude is quoting Enoch from the book of Enoch and the passage he's referring to is in 1 Enoch 1 9 which says this, Behold, he comes with the myriads of his holy ones to execute judgment on all, and to destroy all the wicked, and to convict all flesh for all the wicked deeds that they have done, and the proud and hard words that wicked sinners spoke against him. So the question for people who are critical about the book of Enoch is, if the book of Enoch is not scripture, why did Jude directly quote from it? Also, why did Peter, one of Jesus' twelve disciples, write in the Bible about a story that could only be found in the book of Enoch? In 2 Peter 2.4, Peter writes about a certain action that God took, 
where he did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. Now we know in scripture that Jesus says that hell was created for the devil and his fallen angels, but nowhere in the canonized scripture does it refer to God specifically binding and throwing the fallen angels into outer darkness until a reserved time of judgment. So how did Peter know about this judgment in specific detail? The reason Peter knew about this judgment in specific detail is because this was taught about in the book of Enoch that the early church highly esteemed. In 1st Enoch 10 4 it says this, And the Lord also said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness. Make a hole in the desert in Dudale and throw him in. There's just absolutely no way to get around this. The Dead Sea Scrolls proved that the book of Enoch was a valid source of literature within the Jewish community and both Jude and Peter referenced it in the Holy Bible. The only reason that Christians reject the book of Enoch being biblical is because a Catholic council didn't find it beneficial. Meanwhile, the same Christians will criticize Catholicism, but then also defend the actions that they made in not including it in the canonized Bible. Now that we know the book of Enoch is trustworthy, we can talk about archaeological evidence that was found to prove that the account in the book of Enoch is legitimate and proven by historical archaeological evidence. So let's dive into it. This fallen angel may be worse than Satan, but you've never even heard about him. Samyaza was an angel previously referenced in the book of Enoch that was given the assignment to watch over humanity. However, he was banished from heaven after leading the rebellion to create Nephilim giants that Genesis 6-4 talks about. Before Samyaza became a fallen angel, Enoch writes about how he held a council involving 200 other angels, where they talk about their lustful desire to mate with human women. Before they committed this act, they swore an oath on Mount Ermin, a mountain in Lebanon, which is documented in 1 Enoch 6 3-5. And Samyaza, who was their leader, said to them, I know that you may not wish this deed to be done, and that I alone will pay for this great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and bind one another with curses, so not to alter this plan, but to carry out this plan effectively. Then they all swore together, and all bound one another with curses to it. Now what if I told you they found archaeological evidence of this oath inscription on the exact mountain where this oath occurred? Evidence of this oath was actually discovered by a man named Sir Charles Warren in 1869, when he stumbled across a certain tablet in an ancient temple on the summit site of Kasar Antar located on Mount Ermin, with a Greek inscription on it that contained the exact oath of Samyaza and the fallen angels documented in the Book of Enoch. This tablet was given to the British Museum, where it currently resides today. The United Nations also has a base on Mount Ermin, and Paramount Pictures even has Mount Ermin as their logo, with 22 stars surrounding it. The Bible actually refers to stars as angels, and 22 of the angels that fell were listed by name in the Book of Enoch. Which begs the question, if the elite are using the Book of Enoch for their mockery of Christianity via symbolism, then it goes to show you that they know that it's a legitimate source. Keep in mind, the industry only uses biblical symbolism as a form of mockery. So if the Book of Enoch was not biblical, why would they use it as biblical symbolism? This is another key factor that caused me to take the Book of Enoch seriously and not brush it off as some irrelevant book. The Book of Enoch had to be removed because it exposed the fallen angels and gave us way too much information about real biblical events that the higher-ups wanted to steal and gatekeep for themselves in order to keep Christians ignorant to the deep revelations of the supernatural realm. The evidence is just undeniable that this book has significance if you're a follower of Jesus. If the evidence has been discovered with the tablet, if the government established bases up there, and if Hollywood is using it as a form of symbolism to mock the masses, and especially if Jude and Peter both quote from the book of Enoch almost verbatim, it is not illogical to say that this book is very relevant to scripture. If you made it all the way till the end of this video, I want you to comment down below, Enoch walked with God. If you guys have been edified or blessed by the ministry and you want to be a blessing, I have an offering link in the description and you can also buy merch that I drop, which is also linked in the description. If you guys want to watch my last video, you can click up on the top right corner and if you want to subscribe, you can click on the top left corner. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. I love you guys so much. May God bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take care and peace out.